University of Oslo, 1935. While continuing to teach and develop his innovative therapeutic techniques, Reich began a series of laboratory experiments to verify the existence of a physical, biological energy expressed in the emotions. Using human subjects, Reich was able to demonstrate a charge at the skin surface directly related to feelings of pleasure or anxiety. The charge would increase when a subject experienced pleasure and decrease during feelings of unpleasure. From this, Reich concluded that pleasure is the movement of biological energy toward the periphery of the organism, while anxiety is the movement of this energy toward the center. He assumed this energy to be electrical, but was it? And did similar energy processes exist in more basic life forms? Reich discovered that under certain conditions, sterilized and unsterilized substances such as grass, blood, sand, charcoal, and foodstuffs disintegrate into pulsating vesicles that exhibit a bluish color. He called these vesicles bions. Reich observed internal motility in the bions, an effect of energy. He also found that certain bions revealed a strong radiation phenomenon seen here as a white field around the organism and that these bions could kill bacteria and cancer cells. This radiation confirmed the existence of an energy that did not obey any known laws of electricity or magnetism. Reich called this energy orgone because its discovery had evolved from his investigation of the orgasm function and because this energy could charge organic matter. When he published his findings, the scientific and psychiatric communities responded with a vicious year-long attack in the Norwegian press. In the wake of this response, and the inevitability of a Second World War, Reich began to look to America as the future home for his work. In August 1939, Reich sailed for America on the last ship to leave Norway before World War II broke out. Reich settled in the Forest Hill section of New York City. He taught at the New School for Social Research in Manhattan. Published his books in English. Trained American physicians in his therapeutic techniques. And pursued his investigations of orgone energy. Since the energy appeared to be everywhere and to permeate all substances, Reich had to find ways to isolate and collect it in order to study its functions and make it usable. Experiments demonstrated that organic or non-metallic materials, such as cotton, wool, or plastic, attract, absorb, and hold the energy. Metallic materials, steel or iron, attract the energy and quickly reflect it in both directions. On the basis of these experiments, Reich constructed small boxes with alternating layers of organic and metallic materials, with the inner walls lined with metal. The organic layers attract the atmospheric orgone energy, which is then directed inward by the metal layers. Any energy reflected outward by the metal layers is reabsorbed by the organic material, attracted back to the metal and directed toward the inside of the box. The result, a higher concentration of orgone energy inside the box. The more layers, the higher the concentration. This accumulation of energy can be verified in a variety of ways. For example, a constant temperature difference exists between the air above the box and in the surrounding air, contradicting the second law of thermodynamics. 
There also exists a slower electroscopic discharge rate in the higher orgone concentration within the box. These layered boxes, known as orgone energy accumulators, became a valuable tool in Reich's scientific and medical research. Initially, they were used to observe visual manifestations of orgone energy within the enclosure and to test the effects of orgone radiation on cancer mice. Because his results with cancer mice were so promising, Reich decided to test the effects of orgone radiation on human subjects. He constructed orgone energy accumulators that were large enough for a person to sit in, and in 1942, he began experimental treatments with cancer patients. They were all terminal cases. Wright promised no cure and charged no money. Over a period of time, the patients showed marked improvement, relief of pain, healthier blood condition, weight gain, and the shrinkage and elimination of tumors. Despite these positive results, the patients died reinforcing Reich's conviction that cancer is a bioenergetic shrinking following emotional resignation, and that the tumors themselves are not the disease, but merely a local manifestation of a deeper systemic disorder. Once again, Reich's focus became prevention. Reich also discovered that water and high humidity absorb and hold orgone energy making it difficult to carry out experimental work in New York City during the summer. In 1940, on a camping trip to New England, Reich discovered the Rangeley Lakes region in Maine. With its low humidity and clean air, it provided an ideal environment for his work. In 1942, Reich purchased an old farm bordering on a small lake. He called it Organon and envisioned it as a permanent home for the various branches of his work. In 1945, a student's laboratory was built. Three years later, construction began on an Orgone Energy Observatory, which included additional laboratory facilities, Reich's study and library, and outdoor observation decks. Funding for these buildings and for Reich's research came exclusively from his own income as a physician and teacher and from loans and contributions by students. By 1947, after less than eight years in America, Reich's work was attracting considerable interest as orgone research expanded into new areas of psychiatry, medicine, and biophysics. One of Reich's most significant new developments was the discovery of a motor force in orgone energy that had enormous practical implications. Here, Reich demonstrates a small motor being propelled by orgone energy from the body. And here, motor powers provided by orgone energy harnessed from the atmosphere. With the development of Organon, Reich's dream of a home for his work was slowly becoming a reality. Sadly, it was a dream that he would not see fulfilled. In 